one of the most important things that you can have in this walk with Christ is peace. And it's actually one of the fruits of the spirit. And I say that it's one of the most important things that you can have, because if you don't have peace, then it's hard to actually love others, which is the most important thing that you can have in this walk of Christ is love. And so in order for you to truly love others, how God intends you to love, you need to have peace because if not, you will, you know, you'll get angry more. You'll get frustrated at people easier. You won't want to give in certain situations. You will be more selfish. And so that's why you need God's peace. You need that inner peace so that nothing can shake you. Nothing can shake your walk with Christ. You can always have a good mood. You can always smile even through the trials and tribulations. And so that's why in this video, I'll be talking about the five ways that you can actually get peace, that you can have peace in your walk, in this walk with Christ so that you can live how God wants you to live. And then the first way, the first way to get more peace in this walk with Christ is trusting in God. Because having peace is actually a choice. You can have, you can choose to have peace in the certain situations where you don't have to stress. But because you're not trusting in God and you're trusting in your own self, it causes you to stress more. In Matthew chapter, I think it was 633 or six, in Matthew chapter six, it actually talks about how we should trust in God because he feeds the birds, he feeds, you know, the creatures. So what makes you think he won't feed us, his his creation, his creation that's made in his image. And you have to think about that when you're going through a certain situation or when you're, you know, going through, you know, trials and tribulations, you have to realize that God has put that in your life for a certain reason and he will make sure that you're okay. So there's no reason to stress. There isn't any reason to put your faith in the bad circumstances that are gonna happen. And when you stress, when you put your faith in that thing, when you start focusing on the, tr the troubles, the storms, that's showing, that's showing your lack of faith in God. It's showing that your lack, your lack of trust in God, not trusting that things are gonna go right even though it looks bad right now. Because Peter did the same thing in the, uh, in the boat when Jesus was walking on water. Peter had faith in God, yes, st stepping onto the water. He had faith to walk on the water, even though it was, he didn't know it was 100% Jesus. He even asked, Jesus, is that you? He wasn't even 100% sure if that was Jesus, but he still took that leap of faith anyway. He walked, he got out of the boat and walked on water. But when he was halfway there, he started to look around at the storms, the trials and tribulations, the things of life, and then he started to drown. He started to lose faith in Jesus Christ. And many of us do the same thing in this walk with Christ. We go out to a certain job or we make a certain decision not knowing if that really is God's decisions, not knowing if that's really Jesus. And I feel like that was kind of God's way of showing us that we not, we're not gonna know if it's 100% him every single time. Because in that moment, Peter didn't know if that was Jesus 100%. But many of the times we make a certain decision not knowing if it's 100% God or not. And we really think it is, we really have faith in it. And so we take that leap of faith. And when we take that leap of faith and we know it's actually from God, that it's a blessing from God, we start to walk. But then when the trials and tribulations hit, we stop having faith in whatever God has put on our hearts. And so it's important that you keep that firm foundation in your faith, that you don't let those storms and troubles not shake you off of your faith. Because if you continue to have faith in God, if you continue to trust in God, your path will be made straight. You'll be able to make it to the other side. You'll be able to make it to Jesus. You'll be able to make it to God's calling for your life. But you need to trust in God because if you do that, it will be much more easier. You will have peace through the whole situation knowing that God is gonna bring you through. Second way to even trusting God more, but also to give you more peace is spending that alone time with God. Because when you spend that alone time with God, it gets your mind off of the troubles. It gets your mind off of things in the world, remembering your foundation, remembering who you are standing firm in, remembering that you are serving a provider, that you are your father, your heavenly father is a provider. So you have to spend time with the one that you know is going to bring you through the situation that you are in. And that's how you can have more peace. That's when, you know, people, you know, are stressing you out and you can still treat them right even in the midst because you have someone in heaven who is with you. You have the Holy Spirit who is with you. That's why one of the fruits of the spirit is actually peace. Because when you are with the Holy Spirit, you won't be, you know, angry. You won't be mad at, you won't be letting out your frustration on anyone because you have that self-control. And so that's why you need to 
spend that alone time with God. And if you are going through a season where you are going through a lot of trials and tribulations, you need to spend more alone time with God instead of scrolling on social media, trying to get your mind off of life because you're running to the wrong things in that instance. And so you need to run to God for your troubles. The word says, give all of your cares on to God because he cares for you. And so talk to your God about your cares. Talk to God and ask him for strength. To give him all your burdens so he can take that burden off of you. Stop trying to carry all that burden that's on your back and let God give you the peace that you need. And so spend that alone time with God. Start praising God. Start worshiping even through the trials and tribulations because that's really what's going to give you peace. The third way, the third way to get more peace in this life is by meditating on God's word. And it's because when you start meditating on God's word, you will start to renew your mind. And you're probably wondering like, how do I meditate? What does meditating on God's word mean? Well, if you know how to meditate on, or if you know how to stress, then you know how to meditate because stressing is just misplaced meditation. Instead of meditating on the truth, you know, God's word where he's telling you, if you work hard, you'll be successful. You start to meditate on, you know, what if this doesn't work? What if this, you know, what if I'm doing something wrong? What if I'm, you know, what if I'm, this is not God's calling? You start meditating on all these worries, all these stresses, and then that's exactly when you will start to fall. That's when you'll start stressing. But if you were just to meditate on God's word, if you started to, you know, focus on certain verses that you know will help you in a certain instance or verses that will tell you that are telling you that you will be successful kingdom principles then that's when you'll be more peaceful that's when you'll be more that's when you'll be less stressed because you know that god will pull through and that also goes that also plays a role in faith and trust because if you read those verses and yet you don't truly believe those verses like Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 where it says as long as you work willingly as if you're working for the Lord then you'll receive an inheritance or in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 is when it says seek the kingdom first and all its righteousness and all and everything else will be added on to you if you don't truly believe those verses if you don't truly have faith in those verses, then you're going to stress, then you're going to have anxiety. And that's where it roots from not believing God's word, but also not knowing God's word. If you don't know the, the word tells you those things, then you won't have faith and you can't have faith in it. And then you will just be like, God, I, I thought you were a provider. I thought you, you know, I thought you were going to pull through or you'll start believing that God isn't provided and that you need to do it all by yourself. So that's why it's important that you meditate on God's word, know God's word so that you'll know his character. You'll know that he's a provider. Yes, you'll go through, you know, really many storms, but God is still going to provide in the end. And it even says in the word that God feeds the birds. So why didn't you think he'll feed you? And so that's a verse that you need to meditate on those are things that you need to meditate on so that you aren't as stressed when the time comes and the fourth way the fourth way to get more peace is by watching your surroundings watching who you let or give your energy to because if you're giving your energy to the wrong person then those people can agitate you those people can frustrate you but if you were to, you know, distance yourself from certain people that you know that's going to, you know, agitate you or try to give you more stress or just, you know, cause more trouble in your life, then that's when you have more peace. And even in relationships or friendships, if you have certain relationships or friendships that cause you, you know, more stress than peace, then you shouldn't be in that relationship. It even says in the word that uh, I talked about this, you know, uh, two, uh, like two videos ago where I said it's worse to have, it's better to live in the desert than to have a quarrelsome wife. It says that in Proverbs. But the reason why he says that is because you can have peace in the desert, but you can't have peace around a quarrelsome wife. You can't have peace around a quarrelsome friendship. You can't have peace around, you know, a certain job that, you know, has a lot of bickering and arguing. And so that's why it's important that you distance yourself from certain people that cause those stress cause you to not have peace because peace is actually part of the fruits of the spirit and if you can't have peace then you will stop loving others that you'll start affecting the rest of the you know fruits of the spirit you'll st have less self-control because you'll be more frustrated it's going to be harder to read the word and stay close to god because you have people around you who are always causing you to be anxious and stressed and so that's why it's important that you watch your surroundings and even if you can't you know distance yourself from those certain people 
make sure that you're actually giving them less energy. Don't give them all your energy. Don't always, you know, try to talk to them or try to be around them. Don't try to argue. Don't even argue with them in the first place. You know, just be okay with losing arguments, letting go of your pride and letting him just, you know, win arguments sometimes or letting them win arguments sometimes. Stop giving them so much energy because they feed off that energy. They like seeing you mad. The enemy inside of them that's trying to get you to, you know, get out of your character is continuing to influence the other person to talk to you so that you can get out of your character so that you can be more frustrated so that you don't have peace so that's why it's important that you don't give your energy to certain people and i even witnessed this myself i do this a lot of my times sometimes even you know certain comments even certain people around me i don't give energy to because it can ruin your peace so that's why it's important that you don't watch who you give your energy to and watch who you hang around so that you can have peace and lastly the last thing that will give you peace, which is one of the most important, is living for God and not for other people. Because a lot of people get stressed, especially men. I say this for men, but also women too. They get stressed because they're actually living for other people. They're worried about other people's opinions. They're worrying about how other people look at them instead of worrying about how God looks at them. And what I mean by that is if you're living for God and you know you have a you know you're working hard in a job and you're putting God first and you feel like God is calling you to do that but your parents or your relationship is telling you yeah you shouldn't do that you'll be more worried about your parents instead of worrying about God and if you continue to live for other people then you'll be more stressed you'll be don't trying to do more things than you actually should you will start overworking to get rich because you're more worried about you know your relationship your opinions of the relationship or opinion of you know your family members instead of worrying about god and sometimes that will even cause you to procrastinate you won't do certain things because you're scared of what other people think instead of caring of what god thinks and it says in proverbs chapter 29 verse 25 it says trusting in men is a dangerous trap but trusting in the lord is safety because if you trust in the Lord, you have faith in the Lord and you're not worried about, you know, what other people think, but you're just so focused on what God has for you. That's when you are in safety. That's when you're six. That's when your 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 future is in safety. That's when you're protected. So even when people try to, you know, try to scare you, oh, you're not you're not going to be successful in what you're doing or you shouldn't be doing that you'll know that God put it on your heart to do it and you're trusting in God more than mere men. And so start living for God, solely on God, not worrying about other people's opinion. Now I'm not saying just, you know, flush out other people's opinion, not listen to any other person, but I'm saying that if you feel like God is putting it on your heart and you have a vision and you see, you know, progress, you feel, you see God moving in your life, you see moving God moving in that certain particular area in your life, then you should not be so stressed about what other people think and you can hear people you can hear people out see if they really make sense and take it in consideration but don't let that stress you don't let that take you off what god is putting on you putting on your heart because if you see fruits and you feel like god is putting it on your heart then it's probably god's purpose for your life and so make sure that you're living for god and not anyone else make sure you're seeking the kingdom first and all its righteousness then everything else will be added on to you and you'll have a way more peaceful so yes, these are the five ways that you can start living a way more peaceful life so that you don't have to stress, so that you can start loving more people, so that you can, you know, live how God wants you to live in certain situations that are hard. So I hope this video edifies you. I hope that you can use these steps so that you can actually have a more peaceful life. And if you actually want to see how I live a peaceful life, I actually have a vlog channel where I vlog and I give you advice on know how to be more disciplined how to be more consistent how to be live a peaceful life how do you you know renew your mind and i'm gonna just be giving you updates about my life you know q and a's and different stuff like that so if you want to see that the link is down below into my vlog channel and i do appreciate all the support i say that every video because i do appreciate it it's really like a blessing from y'all and i can't thank y'all enough so that's why i got to continue to thank y'all and let y'all know that i never take it for granted but if you want to support the link is down below and i appreciate you for watching but until next time as usual Y'all stay blessed.